Hi everyone, my name is Jess and today I'm going to talk to you about 10 things that I wish I knew before becoming a sales manager. All right, let's go ahead and get started. All right, everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, go ahead and hit that subscribe button below. It would help me out a lot because I am so close to my goal of 2000 and hopefully we can get there by December. So help me out there and let's dive right into this content. These 10 things that I'm gonna share with you about becoming a sales manager and some things that I wish I would have known ahead of time, hopefully will help you. If you're new to your sales career, you wanna become a sales manager, these 10 things, should be a really good eye opener of what the job is like. And if you're brand new to a sales manager role, hopefully these can help you get started. So number one would be don't stress about forecasting. Now hear me out. If my team is watching this, please, we have to be good at forecasting because this is the sales job. We need to be able to communicate what sales are coming in, what's being pushed, the comments that we need to be updating, but really this will come with time. As a sales manager, you are responsible for forecasting your team's number. And this can be really challenging because everyone communicates differently and you almost have to get everyone streamlined to communicate the same way about their deals. Now, one of your employees might forecast very modestly. One might be a little bit more aggressive. So with time, you will learn how your team forecasts and, and, let me tell you, no one is good at this day one. I remember my first time in this new role as lead in Canada, it was very bumpy. The first couple of meetings, I was like, oh my goodness, am I in the wrong role? But forecasting comes. And every time I have a forecast call, I look back and I go, wow, that was a lot better than my first week in this new role. So it will come. If you are worried about that, don't worry. It comes with practice. Now, the second one is an interesting one. I love to solve problems. I love to help people. I love to help customers. But guess what? As a sales manager, if you have 10 direct reports, you cannot solve 10 people's problems and then all of their customers. And, and it's kind of hard at the beginning to make that clear to your team because you do want to be that helpful leader, but you almost have to enable your team to find those answers themselves. Now that's harder said than done. Again, it comes with practice, but just know at the end of the day, you're doing your best with the amount of time that you have and teaching your team how to fix the customer's problems and their problems and where to go. A third thing that I did not really realize is recruiting. You're going to have people coming and going on your team, especially in sales, especially in Canada. There's a lot of attrition and high turnover rates of sellers going to different tech organizations. It is so important to build a network of good people around you. So let's say when someone does leave your team or joins your team, you almost know that person or you are getting those people ready around you to take over the next job that is available. So building that network early, as soon as you're in that role or even prior to being in that role, it is really good to have a network of great people. And a lot of people won't tell you this with a lot of sales experience. I think they almost think it's a no brainer. So important. And I really didn't realize that. And I'm starting to do that now is building the network around you. Now, the next tip that I, uh, not tip, the next learning that I have is um, number four, building a team culture besides around the normal activities of day to day. So have uh, fun, fun hours that you do, maybe a trivia, especially if your team is virtual. I have a team from Vancouver all the way to Quebec and it's impossible to get everyone in the same room. It's just not feasible. And with uh, traveling and things like that, we do a lot of virtual events. So we did um, murder mystery party, trivia, you can do scavenger hunts, uh, you can do something like brand presentations to get to know each other. It is good to get to know each other outside of the initial work activities because again, humans like to work with humans and not just robots doing the day-to-day -day work all the time. Now, number five learning is time management skills. I thought I already had time management skills, but it's even more important when you are a leader. If you have eight plus direct reports, how are you gonna manage that time? How are you gonna set up one-on-ones with these people? What are you gonna talk about? How to make it very efficient? 
Now, anytime I'm talking to my partner, he is very good at time management and really helps me stay on time, ensuring that I don't overwork, that I'm not sitting in front of my computer when I'm not, not needing to work. So I find having a very fixed schedule, um, a little rough around the breaks and the lunches, but having a solid schedule when you start every day and when you stop every day really helps with that time management because you don't waste time during the day because you know you are going to stop at the end of the day and you can't finish this at night. So you become a lot more effective during the day than you know, saying that, oh, I can work a little later today to finish that. You stay on your schedule, you're on time for meetings, you finish meetings on time, and don't over talk if it's not necessary to over talk in meetings. Wrap it up early and just move on to the next thing. Time management, if you take anything away from today's video, is probably at the top to be the best sales leader possible. Now, the next tip that I would have is remember that not everybody works the same as you. This is really hard, especially if you are a fantastic individual contributor, you always hit your target, you're always doing well, you work really hard, you solve all the problems. You need to realize that not everyone is like that. And not, you can't say, hey, not everyone is as committed to the business, it does not work like that. Not everyone does the job the same as you. People look at the world differently, people have different perspectives and different experiences, and you need to step back and understand, hey, they're doing it differently, maybe I can learn from them or the rest of the team. It's maybe not how I would do things, but that's okay. And saying that mantra almost every single day, or even when you get on a one-on-one, -on -one, is perfect as a new leader, is just understanding everyone works different in this world there, there's going to be some people like you but the beauty is having people that are not like you so that you can learn now the next thing that i would recommend especially for a virtual team um, and when you're learning remotely is new hires are going to take time to ramp up not everyone is going to be up and running like that you know the snap of my fingers people do need time to ramp up some jobs, it takes six months, some takes one year. There's going to be new issues arising every single day for that new hire, and they are working through it in a virtual way. You need to be available on Zoom, Teams, email, phone call, whatever they need to feel good and comfortable in the job, and don't have the same expectations as a new hire as someone that has had 10-year experience. Very important to understand that. Now, the eighth Thing that I have learned as a new manager that I wish I would have known before is your team's performance is a direct reflection of you. Now this one is a hard one, especially for those leaders that like to overachieve and do well and you know they're not understanding why their team is not motivated and uh, you know doing the best of the best that they can do and so this this is just it's hard to hear as a leader, oh my goodness, that, that performance that they just did is because of me. It takes a lot to stand back and look at what could I have done differently? Of course they could have done something differently, but did I provide enough coaching? Did I provide enough uh, mentorship and leadership towards that person? Sometimes that person is just not in the right role and that's okay, but it is your job to guide them and push them out of their comfort zone to understand that. And so it's two things, right? You're either not enough focused on them to help them, coach them, and, and give them the knowledge that they want, or they're in the wrong job. But it is up to you as a leader to do that. And when I tell every leader, they're like, why do you like leadership? Leadership is really about an act of service to that person. You are trying to enable that person to come to work every day to, to be them th their selves and their best selves. And if you're not able to enable them, then, then you also need coaching as a leader. And this is the hardest thing as a leader is, it's not about the money, it's not about the title, it's not about the praise of, wow, your team is so great. It's about servicing your team and helping them reach their goals. And if they reach their goals, then we reach our customer goals. So that is, that is really challenging. Um, and that brings me to number nine. 
Number nine would be to ask more questions and give a little bit less demands. Asking questions of why are they doing the things they do? Don't you think that we need something like this? Asking questions and listening to your team is the best thing that you can do, especially as a new leader, new to the team, new to getting to know them. Ask a lot of questions on why we do the things that we do. This will help you a lot in your future career. And lastly, that I absolutely need help on this, and I think some leaders do this really, really well, is define your purpose of being a leader. Define your vision and where you wanna be in the next five to 10 years. And share this with your team. Don't be afraid to talk about what is your next career move? What do you wanna do? And, and this will maybe potentially inspire your team to also be thinking about things like that. It's harder said than done. I'm still not really great at conveying my vision and purpose for my career and my life and this team and something that I need to get good at. And hopefully, if you're looking to get into a leader role, define that right away. Define who you want to be. It can obviously change and move to, to different directions, but have a, have a soft uh, blueprint written out of what type of leader you wanna be and it will convey to your team very smoothly and, and they will really understand where you are coming from. So again, those were my 10, I wish I would have known things of becoming a sales manager, especially at Dell. What are some that you have come up with? Maybe you are a new manager or you're in a new role. Would love to hear from you. Love reading the comments and I will see you next Monday. Take care.